All I want to do is get to where I'm going. This is the DIY Artist Route and You, walking and navigating the uncommon path for creative people in business, music, media, and more. Hi, I'm D. Grant Smith. The road often traveled is the one we see so many people on. You go to college, you get out, you get a job, you work a 9-to-5 gig that helps you pay some bills, but it doesn't offer you the rewards of pursuing your dreams. Those of us on the uncommon path are going a different road, often unpaved, unknown, wrought with challenges, but providing fulfillment in our passions and success on the way. Thank you for joining me. My guest this time is Matthew Belair. He's a sports psychology expert and founder of Zen Athlete, a website dedicated to helping athletes improve their success on the field by improving their inner game, the mind game. I invited Matt to join us because what athletes have to do to be truly great in the realm of physical skills actually has a lot more to do with their inner game of thought than their physical one. The same is true for musicians, startup businesses, entrepreneurs, bloggers, and anyone using your creative gifts to make fulfilling work. We'll talk about specific things that you can do today to increase your focus, bring clarity to your work, and get more done. And all the while, find more peace in the present moment. Matt has a book that will be coming out soon, and we'll discuss that as well. More information on him and his program is at zenathlete.com. And we join our conversation with Matt over the phone. You know, the application for sport is one thing. But it goes far beyond sport when you're helping a, you know, a young person, especially, and a, an older athlete, because all of the skills are, are transferable completely to other sports, to business, to life. It's kind of uh, you know, full mindset coaching, right? How to achieve really anything. To, you know, music is absolutely uh, in there, too. So it's about really just having a proper mindset for anything that you're about to tackle or want to achieve. Yeah, zenathlete.com's got my program on it. Uh, my personal site's Matt Belair, but uh, yeah, Zen Athlete's got a program. You can contact me there and you can have a look. It's uh, got the book and audios and all the training for sports psychology specifically. So for as musicians, it might be a little bit different. Okay, well, tell us just a little bit about yourself, how long you've been doing this and how you got started. So for me, I've kind of been born this way, interested in the power of the mind, watching Bruce Lee movies as a kid and just curious how they were breaking bricks and, and doing all these insane things. So I had a strong martial arts background, which is very heavy on meditation and concentration and all that kind of thing. And when I got into my teens, I just started reading everything I could on mind power and uh, you know achieving my own highest potential to the point where I traveled the world and I went to Nepal and meditated with monks for five weeks. And then I uh, trained MMA in Thailand. And then I finally ended up in a Shaolin Kung Fu Academy in China where they could do all the incredible things you see on YouTube or um, those random videos, just trying to learn the secrets of, you know, my own potential. And then in the process, I learned all these tools and techniques. So I was, I've been teaching sports psychology to snowboarders for about uh, eight years now. And I've kind of really just made a push over the last couple of years to write the book Zen athlete, which will be out in a couple months and put the program together because there's such a big gap in what's out there for uh, sports psychology. It's either written in a way that's very uh, psychology based and not relatable to the athlete, or it doesn't have enough of the practical tools. So I really wanted to provide something for athletes that had, you know, the, a lot of the practical tools and, and what they needed to know to apply it rather than all of the science behind it. And if you want to learn the science behind it, it, there's more than enough out there for you to find. When it comes to the, you talked about meditation and, and um, kind of, I guess, the, the Zen aspects of things. Do you notice a difference when you see not just yourself, but when you encounter other athletes that are not uh, as, I guess, balanced in the mental side of things? Um, how does How does that mental game really affect the wins and losses? Uh, you know, the mental game in general, a stronger mental game is, is always something that uh, makes a difference between the top percent. A lot of the athletes that I work with will be able to get to an elite level, but they end up sabotaging themselves because they're not really, uh, you know, they don't really have a strong 
mental game. Now, the meditation specifically, you can see some athletes, and some athletes are just born like this. Some people are just born with the ability to concentrate or a very, they had a very strong upbringing with uh, positive uh, affirmations and encouragement from their parents. So they really were instilled with a lot of great values and they're able to achieve a lot because of that. But most people have a lot of insecurities and a very big problem with clearing their mind and concentrating and focusing on what they want. So what happens is naturally as humans, fear takes over a lot of the time. So they start imagining all the things that they don't want. So when it comes to, you know, achieving what you want in business or, snowboarding or skiing or extreme sports or NFL football, whatever I'm dealing with, they really need to learn to focus on what they're trying to do right and what they want to happen and the ability to clear the mind. You can see the athletes that can easily do that. They just kind of take a few breaths and their mind is clear and then they focus uh, very powerfully on the things that they want. So there's definitely a a difference between the uh, skill level with the athletes that can either A, naturally do that or have worked to be able to do that and the athlete that really struggles with clearing their mind and focusing their intention on what they're trying to achieve. So how, if somebody listening to this is going, okay, I, I want these things. I want to have a better, sharper mental game, but I, I need to, I need to understand what, what I need to do to, to do meditation. How often, or I guess it daily makes sense for the often role, but when it comes to um, giving yourself an amount of time, uh, and I know there's some breathing techniques and stuff for this as well, but, but how much time do you encourage a beginner to spend on a daily basis meditating? And what does the process look like? Sure. Well, first of all, meditation is a lot simpler than people think, and they really complicate a simple practice. So when you're going to meditate, just think about it as the practice of clearing your mind or focusing on one thing. And the reason why people say they can't do it or it's confusing or they don't know what to do is because when you try to do that, all of the thoughts of the day come up and you, and you continue to think of all these random things. And that's the whole point of meditation is because that's how our minds naturally work. So meditation is the practice of quieting the mind. That's all it is. You can do it in any way that you want. Um, all I would recommend, and in the book I have a, a kind of a foolproof process because when I start – started to meditate when my teens, um, you know, I think ADHD is a, a bunch of baloney, but if, if it was a thing, then I would definitely have had it. Um, I'd sit down and I would do one or two breaths and then I'd get up and walk away. I'm like, what the heck am I doing? But for some reason I had the tenacity to keep trying. So the next day it was about 30 seconds. I'd make it to five breaths and then a minute. And I would just always be repetitively thinking in my mind, thinking what the hell is the point of this? But eventually, with practice, I was able to stay for a little bit longer. And then with more practice, I was able to sit with no thought um, for quite some time, just uh, breathing. And, you, you know, that's a pretty amazing thing. If you can get through 10 breaths without a thought, that's, that's amazing. And over time, I was able to do more than that. So what I would recommend for anybody is either A, just get some relaxing music, which helps and get it off YouTube, and just sit and pay attention to your breathing for a set period of time. So I have a timer for just a minute and then for 10 days increase by one minute intervals. So the first day you're just going to do a minute. The second day, just two minutes, third day, three minutes. Don't push it. Fourth day, four minutes, five days, five minutes. And that if you're comfortable with five minutes at the, at uh, day five, then go to 10 minutes if you want or increase incrementally by a minute. And the key here is doing it every day. So you're making it so small and so stupid simple that you can, um, you know, you can commit to doing the practice because, you know, you don't need to do it for an hour or 10 hours. And, you know, for a beginner, an hour is going to be insane to them. So if you just do that really simple one minute increment, if you can relax your mind for 10 minutes a day, that's, that's all you need. You can do it for hours and hours, but I find for most people, if you just give yourself 10 minutes at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day, ideally, you can really um, get all the benefits of the practice. You know, I'll go from times of meditating a lot and times where I don't meditate as much, but that practice stays in there. That information is in there. So I have a very easy time clearing my mind whenever I'd like from previous practicing. With uh, what I found with meditation is it helps me really stay focused on everything I need to do in the day. So I've got a, 
uh, when I make a short list of things to do thinking I, I will be lucky if I get done with all this stuff, if I spend that, like you just talked about, if I spend my morning uh, in a, a period of focus, I'm actually finished with all that stuff much quicker and the production is much better. Do you find the same thing with your, your individual work and with your, your clients as well? Absolutely. I find the biggest benefit is that it slows the day down for me. So if I kind of get out of meditation practice for a week or so, you know, I'm kind of caught up with, I need to do all of these things and uh, not stressed, but I, I feel like it's, you know, one thing to the next. But when I just take that 10 minutes and just shut everything off and I come back, it the whole world slows, the whole day goes. And, the, you know, there's so much, so many benefits to the meditation practice, but it's most people are just constantly running and running and running and trying to achieve and try to do and try to create and this and that. And it's never enough, you know, it's like when I have this or, you know, then I can relax when this is done and this and those. And the reality is that, you know, it's all perfect at every moment. It, you're, you're totally whole. You can be centered and happy and fulfilled while doing all those practices. And you can be fully present while doing all of those practices. And, you know, in Zen, they'll give the same reverence to meditation as they do to washing the floors, to being fully present. And that's what it does for me is really um, helps me to be present in those daily activities and appreciate just the um, the mundane activities and, you know, yeah. And just really appreciating them knowing that it, that I can be there with full presence and, and fulfillment rather than trying to, you know, get done so I can move on to something else that's more important when it's all just one equally important, perfect thing. Uh, you mentioned your book, uh, which is coming out and you said in a couple months, right? Yeah, hopefully a couple months. I'm just getting in the uh, the formatting process right now. Uh, speaking for for my audience, which is primarily musicians and uh, startup entrepreneurs and content creators like bloggers and podcast makers and folks like that, how can your book help them uh, create growth and uh, better results? You know, it is focused more towards athletes. Uh, I had originally wrote the book and it was then snowboarding. Uh, I will still make that. And then I realized that I needed to make it a little bit more broad for all the traditional sports. My big passion with this book and the reason why I made it Zen Athlete is because it's so applicable to any sport. But the reason why I'm really passionate about getting it out there to youth is because all of these things could be applied anywhere. It's really just a book on mindset. So if you took out Zen Athlete and you replaced it with Zen Business, Zen Music, uh, Zen Anything, it all applies because the formula that I have in there, I have a Zen performance wheel and it's just a model you go through of, of the tenets of what you're going to be learning. And it's all about, you know, mindset and focus and discipline. And it gives you tools for each one. So you can kind of see where you are and, and give you strategies to get to a better feeling place, a more, uh, more empowering spot with, with uh, what you're trying to achieve. So it'll look at limiting beliefs and how to install positive empowering beliefs. So if you're trying to create a business and you have this nagging feeling that you can't do it, or you're trying to, you know, create a song, well, for music, you need to get to a very uh, centered artistic place. You need to be focused. And I think uh, for my friends that are in music, their best work comes when they're fully present and fully centered and kind of allow it to come to them rather than force it. So there's relaxation techniques. There's uh, it teaches you how to do hypnotic recordings or guided relaxations, which are nothing more than putting yourself in a relaxed state and allowing the things to come to you or, or visualizing the things that you want. So these things can be literally applied to, to anything that you would want, just kind of following following the tools and inserting whatever you're trying to achieve, whether it's business, music, sports, um, and, and anything really. What are some obstacles that you see uh, your clients and, and athletes uh, struggle with as it pertains to staying focused? The biggest, the biggest problem in general I see is people focusing on what they don't want. So it's a little bit different, but this is the, the biggest, you know, if I could give anybody one piece of advice, and it's from my good friend and mentor, uh, Michael Lozier, who wrote the book, The Law of Attraction. And the reason why so many people are attracting the things that they don't want in their life is they're focusing on the things that they don't want. So they're talking about it. So 
you know, if I say don't picture the American flag or try not to think about music or don't imagine a drum set, automatically your unconscious mind thinks of that. And then if you search on Google, you know, no football or whatever, it's going to come up. And if you say to a dog, no walk, no treats, it's going to automatically think about those things. And it's the same way with our subconscious and our minds that if we think about, you know, I don't uh, want to struggle writing this song or I don't want to fail at business or I don't want to be a failure, whatever, you're giving attention, energy and focus to the thing that you don't want. So it's really important for me when I work for with athletes to say, I don't want to fall. I don't want to hurt myself in competition. Well, that's exactly what they're giving attention to. So every time you have a thought or you say those words that are counterproductive to what you're trying to achieve, you stop and you ask yourself, so what do I want? So if you don't want to fall in your snowboard, you want to land your trick. If you don't want to fail in business, you want to succeed in business. If you don't want to be stressed out every day, you want to feel better and at peace with yourself. And as you continually refocus, you're resetting the energy and you're literally rewiring your brain. Uh, there's a great book I read called You Are the Placebo by Dr. Joe Dispenza. And it goes into all the science about the wiring of the brain. But essentially what happens is when you think thoughts, you're always hardwiring your brain. And when it becomes repetitive, it really just makes a neural, neural pathway, neural connection. So you really have to continually refocus on always what you want. And you're going to create um, the chemical reactions in the brain to you know, give you more power, more energy towards the things that you want. So that is by far the biggest piece of advice I have for anybody doing anything. What would be, uh, let's say, two tips that you would give to someone outside of athletics who are trying to build and grow their offering? And maybe you've, you've mentioned entrepreneurs and, and business people, but um, as it pertains to getting their mental game better, what are two things you would recommend them do today? I would recommend a meditation practice. So the ability to clear the mind. So just doing 10 minutes a day. Um, the benefits of a continued meditation practice are you know, beyond what I can put in words. It helps you become a more fulfilled, centered human being, and that's the whole point. Um, you know, whether you're the best athlete in the world or the best businessman in the world, what it really comes down to is how you feel at every moment of every day, how you are as a person, because you could have everything and nothing inside, and you could have nothing and everything inside. So that, to me, is a process of just being a more fulfilled, happy human being. And I think that that beyond all of our ego goals, or even if they are beyond ego goals, um, the most important thing, the most fundamental thing. The other thing that I would do is really focus my intention on what I want and uh, getting it very, very clear. So what I would do is I would write out an intention sheet. So I would get super specific with what I am trying to do and get as detailed as possible. And most people are more focused on the daily task of, you know, I need to do this and this and this. So I'll leave that up to the marketing books and I'll give you more of a, you know, mind power esoteric example, which would be to once you have this intention and you're very, very clear. So, so for example, it'd be, you know, I want to create a music business. So you could say, you know, I want to make, you know, $10,000 a month or more from my music. I want to be surrounded by amazing people doing music all the time. I want to be playing shows and so and so. I want uh, clients to come to me easily and naturally. And you make it as long and as specific as possible. And then what you do is basically make a recording where you tell yourself to relax or you put it to uh, relaxing music and visualize that every single day. So what you're doing is you're practicing and you're hardwiring the thing that you want to happen through a visualization. And again, there's a ton of science around the power of visualization. So all I would recommend is one, the meditation practice, because it's going to help clearing your mind. It's going to help with everything that you do. And then two, get very, very, very clear in your goal, write it out as detailed as possible. And then simply just put it in your iPhone and you don't really have to worry about, uh, you know, doing it right, all you do is narrate the thing that you want to yourself. So you see yourself, you know, as you want to be as this successful musician and businessman achieving all your goals, and really amplify the feeling of what it's going to be like. Um, it's kind of the fake it, uh, fake it until you make it model. And again, there's a lot of science to how that works as well. So when you practice the visualization, you're really hardwiring your brain to achieve these things. And it becomes more of a natural state. 
Um, and when you don't have it, it's, it's kind of outside you. So your body and your mind doesn't really understand it and it, and it's something outside of you, but your brain really doesn't know the difference when you do a powerful visualization. So that's one thing that I'd recommend is just visualizing in detail what you're trying to achieve on a daily basis. Well, thanks a lot, Matthew. This has been really awesome and I appreciate your time and I appreciate your insights into uh, how to have a really strong mental game and the value that that is. Thanks. Hey, no problem. Thanks so much for having me, Grant. Matthew Belair is a sports psychology expert, coach, and mentor to athletes. He is the founder of Zen Athlete and the upcoming author of a book by that same name. Get more information on his platform at zenathlete.com. The DIY Artist Route and You podcast is an extension of the coaching and mentoring that I provide for artists, entrepreneurs, and creatives who want to take their skills, talents, and interests and turn them into profitable careers. More information, free PDF guides, and the full archive of episodes of this podcast is at dgrantsmith.com. And tell me what subject or guest you would like to have on this podcast. What's another outlet and road that we can travel to all help each other? What's an area of the uncommon road that you want some clarity on and help with? reach out to me directly at dgrantsmith.com. Music from this episode from Timothy Palmer. It's a song called Tryin', which is perfectly appropriate for our subject matter this time. Get more of Timothy's amazing songwriting at facebook.com slash timothypalmermusic. Thanks for joining me. I am D. Grant Smith for the DIY Artist Route and You podcast. Come back again. <laughs>